So please come take a seat. Um, come join us. We are going to have a really insightful chat for the next 30 minutes or so. And then after that, it'll be a little challenging. You're going to listen instead of talking for the next 30 minutes. And then you're going to talk the rest of the night. And you're going to cheer for the rest of the night. And you're going to do all of the fun things. But for the next 20, 30 minutes, we're going to listen to these wonderful minds that we have gathered here today. Um, so we have a group of folks who have worked in Web3 NFTs specifically around sports. Um, and so what we're going to discuss is how Web3 is really revolutionizing and innovating um, in the sports market. So before we get started and meet all of these wonderful people next to me, I want to introduce myself to you. I'm Michelle Adams.
in the sports market? Um, I think there's so many opportunities. I can speak to what I personally work in, which is bridging like in real life sport events to um, NFT tickets. So like NFT VA, for example, what most basketball tournaments with people that are in the NFTs or in the Web3, they all share the same fashion. And also your ticket to enter to play in the game is an NFT. Um, and so that's kind of a simple, easy way to, to bridge that is just by making the things that you are already going to do. So you pay to participate, just make it an NFT and you know, they pay that way. And that way, new people that genuinely like to play sports, they get onboarded naturally because they want to participate, so they have to buy that ticket. And if it's an NFT, then boom, you already got someone in the door. Um, so that's one way, and that's the one my twin, Stephanie. Um, like many people, my first foray to purchasing NFTs was through um, NBA Top Shot. And who owns a Top Shot here? Oh, okay. Top Shot. <laughs> um, and Top Shot was um, oh, is owned by a company called Dapper Labs. And so I joined Dapper Labs as VP of Content and Entertainment Partnerships. And I bring what really attracted me to them is the ability to bring mainstream consumers into the blockchain space. And what blockchain does is it revolutionizes fandom in that no longer do you just buy a baseball card or buy a collector's item, keep it in your basement and tell everyone you're a fan of X athlete or X team. Now you can A, have this asset that lives on the blockchain and is verified verifiable by the public and everyone can see how important X team or X athlete is to you. But you can also um, take part in the appreciation of that asset. So the more people that want it, the rarer the moment is, the more benefits for you. You can sell it by selling it on the secondary market, which is quite different to what we used to do by showing our, our traders items on eBay and hoping that it was a legit item. And so it's also verifiable, so you, you can show it's authentic. And so that's just one aspect of blockchain that brought me into the space, and I'm sure we'll talk about other aspects that it does to sports, but yeah. Great. So, you know, if they had control of sports and entertainment, we took a little bit different approach. Rather than saying, you know, what do we want to be in, block, or in blockchain or Web3, we said, you know, what are the kind of Web2 or current real world problems that we want to solve? And one of the problems that we decided to solve was the fact that fans today of sports, particularly the younger generation, are watching less and less games start to finish because it's a very passive kind of experience if you think about traditional sports. There's not a lot of control, a lot of, not, not a lot of interactivity for fans. And so we said, you know, how do we go about letting fans really control and make decisions around the teams and the leagues and the sports that they're passionate about? And then we use Web3 to do that. And so, in essence, you know, fans with our leagues, uh, we're known for fan control football. And going into our third season in early 2023, uh, we just announced uh, last week that we're going to be launching fan control boots and eventually fan control baseball. And so, yeah. become part of the community around a given team in each of the leagues, and therefore they get to make decisions, such as the real league rules, they get to draft their players, these are real live athletes that they're drafting to their team, they get to play ball real time, and make other decisions about the way the league is run and the way the team is run in order to join the, the leaderboard, basically, for fans that are really good at making those decisions. So we, we kind of turned it upside down and said, hey, let's solve a, a Web2 or a IRL problem using the blockchain and And I personally love this so much because I think about being a Tar Heel, like there were many a Tar Heel games that I watched. I mean, we always loved Roy Williams and the shots that he called, but sometimes it was like, can we bench him already and put someone else on the field? And that's what you all do is you put the agency in the hands of the folks who hold the NFT, which is really powerful. And so Chris, I'm curious from an investor standpoint, I mean, you have a lot 
of investments in you know, Web3 and sports, that connection in your portfolio, what are you seeing that you're most excited about? Like, what have you doubled down on investing in? Yeah, I'm actually an investor in everyone on the stage. Uh, <laughs> I'm Studios, Coltrane, Dabba Labs, Nike Media on the team, and Tech Runs. So I'm all about being in the office. Um, I think the future of blockchain and sports is about loyalty. We haven't unlocked that loyalty yet, but you're a season ticket holder. You like these things, you bought this stuff, tied to your ticket. That hasn't been done yet, so like, you can still do that. Um, and there's technology that's happening right now, and the state involved checks, which going to the hall, like in seat buying, you bought through the store, it's not the same right now. For those of you who like them, you've got a lot of time to do it, so they all come out of time together. When you have that kind of thing, doing the topic together, that's what makes them go up. So when you want them as you want to have, they can send them out again, and they're actually good for you, and they can go on too. So who knows where the fancy can, do it once, they can go and do it again, right? Maybe we don't want to do it again. <laughs> So I think it's all right now like being more like a, a team of with someone and a distribution fully across the entire life, not just one day in the stadium. I love that. And I love the idea of like rewarding fans for certain behavior. Even I don't know how many of you parked in the garage today and I drove past all the like Marlins member parking and I was like, man, really wish I could park on one of these floors, right? But if there were some NFT that unlocked access to that after you had done certain things, right? So that's really the potential that you're talking about. I love it. All right, and Ashley, with us. Sure, so at TechRunz, I lead the member experience across all of our markets, um, which predominantly is Miami, Los Angeles, Bay Area, and soon to be New York, and so I touch community. Um, and I talked about, touched on this point a little bit before in introducing myself about the cultural identity around like being from the Bronx and being a Yankee, right? So when I talk about blockchain technology and how it impacts sports, Blockchain is both the technology and the philosophy. So you'll hear a lot in the Web3 space like Walk Me, we're all gonna make it. Um, so you take these concepts of like sportsmanship and the identity and the community that already exists around the love of sports, and then you supercharge that with the technologies of blockchain to grow the philosophy of the blockchain, which is that we're all gonna make it, and then you can start to do things like capturing the economic upside of a powerful community built around sports um, or interest or deeper data so that you better understand what it is that people are doing when they're watching games or attending games so that you can better serve them. Um, but but I think that it's really the power of WalkMe is just as important as the power of the underlying technology itself. I love that, and we love Wagby, actually, that is one of our NFTs. So you see behind Ashley, actually, within the Tuttle Tribe and in the shirts we're wearing, within the word tribe, you see some of our NFTs, and Wagby is one of them uh, as part of our collections. We do love that philosophy and that ethos, like, we are all going to make it. So, um, let's talk now about we all are here. Like, how are we going to make it, right? What is your advice to folks that are here today on, like, how they should enter into Web3 and sports, right? And this should be from, from your particular you know, companies, products that you represent, or projects, and also for folks in the audience who are either representing themselves as individuals and as fans, or as founders, and maybe they want to be blockchain technologists. So what's your advice on how we all are going to make it? What steps should we take? I would say, uh Take it very slow, do one or two things at a time, and go along on one or two things. Don't go too crazy, like I did. Don't buy a bunch of projects and have no idea what you have to do all anymore. It does not work out well, I'll tell you that much. Um, and get involved. Like, if you're going to buy something that you love, if you're going to feel like a sports better, if you're going to like, you know, playing a football and making choices, get really involved. Become a community manager. You know, get, get, come to all the things. Get some of the owners, your fellow people who are actually doing things with you. Um, it goes a long way now. It opens up doors to do the wrong stuff. There's no people who are part of the same shared kind of like interest. And foundership is right around the corner now. It's much easier for us. That's something from scratch now. It was harder a couple years ago. You couldn't raise money. I didn't raise money in a couple months with an idea. And some people were really with you. So on a smaller scale, you can work from zero to one faster. Like that three. Just that alone is a huge opportunity for people who have no networks of really much from scratch. Uh, before it was like, who do you know? Now it's what do you know? How do you communicate that on the internet? Which is huge. So, I'm bullish. Um, 
I know it's early, but I think we have lots to talk to each other as far as like share ownership goes. You know, I would say from a fan-controlled sports perspective, one of the things that I've seen us do that's been really helpful is, you know, really listening to the community that we're engaging with. And so we built this community around fan-controlled sports that are interested in, you know, these teams and in play calling and all these different things. But we also have set up fan councils where fans can talk to us directly about what they like about what we do, what they don't like about what we do. And we're pretty quick and nimble to change what it is. And so you know, I use the example um, related to sports that we, in our first season of fan controlled football, we actually had some really bad draft calls on the first couple of games. And immediately, I mean, they were blowing us up on the Twitch chat. They were like, oh my gosh, you gotta be kidding me. Like, this is a completely new concept with the same old referees. Like, what is going on? And they were blowing us up in a minute. And the founders got on the, the screen and said, we hear you. Give us till next week's games and we will fix it. And so we implemented the ability for fans to overturn the referee calls if they voted to do so. And so, yeah, and, and you know, it's, what's incredible is some people say, well, oh, I bet that's mayhem, right? That fans are constantly questioning the refs. And it's like, no, not really. Because, you know, they've got the wacky mindset that says, look, we don't want to do this to, to make clowns of the whole situation, but we do want to be heard. When there's bad referee calls, we want to roll the takes back and we want to be able to return it. And so I think that you know, we're really listening to the, the community and engaging them in the solution and how to go forward. I actually have a little issue with the lightning term because I don't think everyone is making it right now. And so I would say the first way um, that we all will make it is first through education. So um, kudos to Michelle for providing forums like this where we can lower that barrier to entry and realize that it's an approachable technology. I think that this whole like blockchain cult that we're in seem very polarizing to people who are on the outside. And so I would even say first step is if you want to get your foot wet, shameless plug from my previous organization, but if you want to buy a top shot, you can get it with your credit card for $9 at the lowest price. And that's like a good way to dip your toe into Chris's point without using your, liquidating your 401k and losing all your money. Um, but also, um, in order for us all to make it, we need consumers. And so the, the profile of consumers right now, although some may feel that they're being left behind, we're still very, very early. And we need the consumers who are collecting, who are involved in blockchain, to reflect the diversity of the world. And so we all need to do our part to make sure we're not leaving behind our respective communities um, and showing genuine use cases why people want to get involved. And I think if you're not a natural collector, it's weird to just jump in and start collecting something. But you might like community, so tech funds might be something you get involved in. So finding where you fit in, I think, is, is a natural first step before just like doing something that's not native to your genuine behavior. I love what you said. Can I just plus one to that? Also, flow blockchain, like Dapper Labs, um, you know, flow blockchain, essentially easy blockchain, which is why crypto is very using it as well. We want to onboard toy collectors um, and gamers in our space. But I think, Michelle, you're asking, how do people take that first step? I feel like everyone's already taken the first step just by being here. Like, literally, everyone's already at step one. This is step one.
your community or your customer ownership over their process of being in your community. Um, and so that's a really good place to start if you have the power to do so. Love it. And thank you, Stephanie, so much for double clicking on the fact that like, we have to make sure that we are building Web3 inclusive of all of the people, all of the consumers who will use it, which is what Web3 equity is about. This is about gender equity and making sure that more women are represented in Web3 and moving forward, because we've been left out in the past. And I actually think in sports, right, this is another place where women have not always been at the forefront of decision making around, you know, what is happening in the sports market and the sports industry. And you have a panel of six people, and five of them are gender representing women, right? So we've got we've got some leadership here. But I'm curious for this last question and like three minutes before we throw the first pitch on the field, um, what do you think has the biggest potential in sports to be disrupted? Like is it maybe more women's sports are, are at a higher level? Is it completely new sports will be invented? Is it things like baseball might like, you know move quicker and be less innings? I don't know. Maybe that's bad to say here. Don't say that anymore. <laughs> but like really quick fire on like what within the sports market, the sports industry do you think has the most potential these structures? I mean my answer is definitely going to be community, empowering the communities, empowering fans instead of it being a fishbowl situation of spectatorship. There is now like, a new frontier of ownership of being able to own the process and own the economic upside of being bought in to any of these projects. So definitely the power the community has. I, I'm really excited about the ability for um, non-superstars to earn a sustainable revenue from, from their sports and their skill set. Like, even looking at college and the type of sports that institutions put money behind and the athletes that are big stars, now they're going to be able to build their own communities even if they're not the MVP every year, even if they their sport might not be the most popular sport, and that goes into the professional realm too, where you can build community around your name, image, likeness, and monetize that, and then be able to reap those rewards from that affinity. Yeah, I, I think there's an opportunity to really open up what it means to be a vested owner in sports. And so I think from the athlete, to the family, to the owners, and I think owners don't have to look like 70 year old players anymore. And so I think really redefining that vested owner or vested stake in sports and what that means is a big opportunity. I think it's a fan experience that's gonna change completely. And you're, you're testing the world now, but if it gets this level, I think you're insane more engaged, like, you know, if we're at this level, you kind of walk around, you eat some food, you miss a lot of the game. So, like, it's going to be the next level. Good thing engaged at home, probably first, and even in person, and eventually in person. So, I think you're going to see that area go wildly crazy. Hopefully, we'll get a lot of choices. Okay, so I'm about to just tell everyone how they can connect with you. Um,
hopefully continuing your education around Web3 topics. So every month we do an event where we come together as a group and then we break out into small sessions so that you can choose the topic that you want to learn about. If you're like, hey, I heard everything you guys said, but I don't even have a wallet yet, we have a session for that. If you're like, I have a wallet, but I don't actually know which NFT I might want to buy, we have a session for that. If you're like, I've actually you know, been around the space a little bit and I want to brainstorm around some topics that blockchain technology can solve, we have sessions for that. So please you know, follow along with what we're building, follow us, join the events. We have one coming up on October 4th. Um, that will be hosted in the Wynwood area in Miami. And my last ask, so this NFT collection that we built, it's called the Tuttle Truck. Does anyone know what Tuttle, have you heard this word Tuttle before? Shout out to Julia Tuttle. Julia Tuttle is the mother of Miami. It's the only major US city that was founded by a woman. And so we created a collection of digital art pieces that represent her. And Amaranta Martinez is the artist of this beautiful collection of NFTs. And she's gonna be out in the field in like T minus 90 seconds or something. And she's gonna throw the first pitch. She has been training for this. She is like ready, she's got the sparkle jacket. And I was just notified that you actually have time to get a drink and then come back over to the front of the bullpen and get really loud and rowdy in 10 minutes when Alma throws that first pitch. Um, so thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for supporting the Marlins. And Marlins, thank you for making this possible. Um,